as outlined in the Wall Street Journal editorial this morning, where my father told me, if you're in the hole, stop digging, Stan. All right. So I was actually happy to see when the announcement, the support for Ukraine and Israel, $106 billion, and I was waiting to hear what the offset was going to be. Was it going to be entitlements? Where were the cuts going to be? And the next thing I knew, two days later, there was not only no offset, there was $56 trillion in emergency spending. Stanley Druckenmiller's recent appearance on CNBC's Squawk Box is a deep dive into his views on the U.S. government's fiscal policy, particularly in the context of the economic environment prevailing at the time of the interview. He presents a critical analysis of the government's spending patterns, which he likens to spending like drunken sailors, a metaphor indicating a lack of restraint and foresight. Today, we're going to go over Druckenmiller's insight regarding the state of the economy and fiscal policy in the United States and where he sees them heading in the coming years. Before we start, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Stay with us until the very end, where I reveal what Stanley Druckenmiller is doing to protect himself and profit from the upcoming economic turmoil. Let's get started. Stanley Druckenmiller's critique of the Treasury's debt management strategy is rooted in his view of fiscal prudence and the optimal use of market conditions. He underscores the Treasury's oversight during a period when interest rates were at their lowest, a time that presented a golden opportunity for the government to minimize long-term borrowing costs. By not issuing more long-dated Treasury bonds, such as 30-year bonds or even longer durations, the Treasury failed to lock in the favorable rates for an extended period. Druckenmiller sees this as a strategic error because as interest rates rise, the cost of refinancing or issuing new debt will increase, leading to a higher interest burden on the national debt. This could have been mitigated, he argues, if the Treasury had capitalized on the low rates when they were available, thus securing a more manageable debt profile for the future. Druckenmiller's perspective is that of a forward-thinking financial strategist who understands the impact of interest rates on national debt. He implies that the Treasury should have acted more like a savvy investor, taking cues from the private sector where individuals and corporations refinance their debts to longer maturities to take advantage of the low rates. This kind of strategic financial management is not just about responding to current conditions, but preparing for future economic landscapes. The failure to do so has left the U.S. in a less advantageous position where future taxpayers may bear the burden of the Treasury's lack of foresight. Druckenmiller's contention is not just with the missed opportunity, but with the broader implications it has for the country's fiscal health and economic stability. Stanley Druckenmiller's alarm over the rise in government spending from 20% to 25% of GDP is predicated on the principle of sustainable fiscal policy. He warns that this 5% hike represents not just a quantitative increase, but a qualitative shift in how the government views and categorizes its spending. By not balancing this surge with cuts or offsets in other areas, the government risks creating a structural deficit that could become entrenched and harder to reverse over time. Druckenmiller is particularly critical of the categorization of certain expenditures, such as childcare, as emergency spending. He argues that while such priorities are valid and necessary for social welfare, they should be planned and budgeted for in a manner that reflects their ongoing nature rather than being hastily classified as emergency measures. This misclassification may lead to a lack of rigorous financial planning and oversight, potentially resulting in inefficient allocation of resources and long-term fiscal imbalances. Druckenmiller's critique extends to the broader implications of unchecked government spending. He implies that such fiscal expansion, especially when not offset, could lead to inflationary pressures, as more government spending without corresponding economic growth can devalue currency. Furthermore, this increase in spending could necessitate future tax increases or spending cuts, choices that are often politically challenging and can have their own negative economic repercussions. Druckenmiller's focus on sustainability suggests a vision where government spending is carefully calibrated to the economy's ability to support it without jeopardizing future economic health or placing undue burden on subsequent generations. 
His comments serve as a cautionary reminder of the delicate balance between government expenditure and economic growth and the need for disciplined fiscal management. Druckenmiller's emphasis on the need to reform entitlement programs is a reflection of his broader concern about the long-term trajectory of the U.S. fiscal situation. Entitlements such as Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid constitute a substantial portion of federal expenditures, and Druckenmiller points out that without a serious re-evaluation of these programs, the government's financial stability is at risk. He suggests that the current path is unsustainable as entitlement spending is projected to grow faster than the economy, thereby increasing the debt burden. Druckenmiller's call for strategic financial management involves making difficult but necessary decisions to ensure that these programs are solvent and do not impose an excessive fiscal weight on future generations. This may include measures such as adjusting benefits, reforming eligibility criteria, or finding new funding mechanisms that do not exacerbate the debt. Moreover, Druckenmiller draws a parallel between government fiscal management and the practices of households and corporations that have successfully navigated low-interest environments. Just as these entities have refinanced their obligations to reduce interest expenses and extend maturities, he argues that the government should also have employed a similar strategy with its debt. By not doing so, it missed out on the chance to alleviate the pressure of interest payments in the future. Druckenmiller's perspective is that a proactive and strategic approach to managing both debt and entitlements is essential for the economic health of the nation. He advocates for a more disciplined and long-term view of fiscal policy, one that aligns with best practices in financial management and ensures that the government's fiscal path is both responsible and sustainable. Stanley Druckenmiller's insights into the implications of fiscal policy extend beyond the immediate concerns of debt management to encompass the broader economic landscape, particularly the interplay between fiscal policy and monetary policy. He suggests that the government's expansive fiscal path has significant ramifications for the market outlook and the Federal Reserve's mandate to maintain price stability. Druckenmiller implies that the current trajectory of high government spending could complicate the Fed's efforts to control inflation. When the government increases spending, it can boost aggregate demand, potentially overheating the economy and contributing to inflationary pressures. This scenario places the Federal Reserve in a position where it may need to tighten monetary policy more aggressively, which could include raising interest rates. The prospect of rising interest rates is a central concern for Druckenmiller, as it directly affects the cost of servicing the national debt. Higher interest rates would increase the interest expense on new and existing government debt, particularly if the debt is not locked in at fixed rates for the long term. This could lead to a situation where a larger portion of the government's budget is devoted to interest payments, crowding out other spending priorities, and potentially leading to a vicious cycle of borrowing. Druckenmiller warns that such a cycle could undermine investor confidence, affect the creditworthiness of the United States, and ultimately have a dampening effect on economic growth. His comments serve as a caution against short-term fiscal expediency that neglects the long-term economic consequences, advocating instead for a balanced approach that considers the impact of fiscal decisions on the broader economic system. He therefore expresses a cautious stance on the stock market. Despite acknowledging some potential opportunities in sectors like AI, he is generally not enthusiastic about the market's prospects. Druckenmiller notes that the fiscal stimulus package introduced during the Biden administration may provide some short-term market support, but he also warns of the unintended consequences on interest rates and the potential for these pressures to cause disruptions in the market. Reflecting on recent transactions, Druckenmiller mentions a lack of satisfaction with his purchases and contentment with his sales, indicating a challenging investment environment. He expresses skepticism about both short-term and long-term investments, challenging the common belief that stocks invariably rise over the long term. Citing his past prediction that the S&P 500 would remain stagnant over a decade, he maintains this view, suggesting that the market is due for a fundamental adjustment in valuation, particularly concerning the price-to-earnings ratio. Druckenmiller is doubtful that earnings will increase in the following year, anticipating they will be flat at best. 
This outlook leads him to a subdued enthusiasm for the broader market and individual stocks. As he believes the current market pricing does not warrant excitement for long positions. At an event hosted by the Robin Hood Foundation and J.P. Morgan in New York, Druckenmiller conveyed his escalating apprehension about an imminent disruption in the economic landscape. In response to these concerns, he disclosed that he has taken massive leveraged positions in short-term notes, joining a growing chorus of investors who are raising concerns about the stability of the global economy. Take this as you wish, but this legendary investor is expressing concerns about the stock market and is taking a cautious position on the markets. Thank you, as always, for joining. Until next time.